Good morning, everyone, and welcome to the University of Alberta Faculty of Law. Before we start today's program, I want to go over a few housekeeping notes. Today's presentations are being videotaped and will be posted on our website so that students who could not attend today can watch them. And there will also be photographers taking photographs. Washrooms are located downstairs, so if you go down the stairs that are just right outside this door, there will be signs at the bottom, so they should be relatively easy to find. If you refer to your postcard, you will see a brief roadmap of today's program. Over the next hour, we will hear from speakers who will share insights on the various benefits U of A law has to offer. Then we will break into smaller groups and head into the Knowledge Cafe portion. You will tour the building in your groups and meet some of the student groups, alumni, and faculty. You will be led by your student volunteers who are extremely friendly, so make sure you ask all of your questions. Lunch is at 12.15 and will take place outside of these doors. At 1 p.m., the Knowledge Cafe portion will continue again, so make sure you ask your group leader where to meet at 1 p.m. after lunch. Last, this room, it's room 231 and 237, is your home base. So feel free to leave your bags and jackets in here, but I would recommend taking your valuables with you. So thank you all for joining us this, for this year's Dean's Welcome. We know that many of you have traveled great distances to be here today, so thank you. My name is Harleen Pada, and together with my classmate Tyler Tremel, we'll be your MC for the day. First, I would like to congratulate you on getting accepted into law school. You should be very proud of this achievement. I remember being very excited, but much more nervous, sitting where you are when I attended Dean's Welcome in 2017. I will begin today by telling you a little bit about myself and why I chose to come to U of A Law. I began my university career at the U of A in 2012 in the Faculty of Science, but later transferred to the Alberta School of Business, where I completed my Bachelor of Commerce in Business Law and Economics. I decided to pursue law school when I was in my third year of university, and even then I was not 100% certain that it was the right choice for me. There was always a part of me that was very nervous about making the wrong decision, and I had absolutely no idea what type of law I wanted to pursue or what I wanted my legal career to look like. Now, as a second year law student, I have realized that deciding to study law at the University of Alberta was the best decision I ever made. The faculty does a wonderful job engaging alumni and legal professionals to attend different events. In March alone, we had at least two events every week, often more, that students are encouraged to attend. You have the opportunity to learn about different aspects of the law, different paths your career can take, and the profession in general. If you, like me, are confused about the path you want your legal career to take, you have every opportunity to figure that out once you start law, so don't worry. I also had the opportunity to get involved with many different student groups and extracurricular activities, including the Student Articling Committee and Recruitment Committee. Further, I had the very unique and exciting opportunity to organize the 2019 Women in Law Dean Speaker Series, an initiative Dean Payton started three years ago to ensure students and the faculty had the opportunity to engage with prominent women in the profession. The faculty offers endless opportunities to get involved. And as a student, you can pick and choose the activity, extracurricular activities you are most interested in and how involved you want to be. I would strongly encourage everyone to get involved when you start law school. I have learned the most and built strong relationships with other students, faculty members, and practicing lawyers through my involvement. Also, everyone comes to law school hoping to be employed by the end of their degree. Our Career Services Office does an amazing job of providing students with support throughout the job search process. Thanks to them, I was able to successfully secure a summer student position, as were many of my classmates. Lastly, you will hear this a lot today, but I do not think we can stress this enough. The faculty and students pride ourselves on the collegial atmosphere. When I attended the Dean's Welcome, I felt comfortable and like I fit in. Fast forward two years, and that has not changed one bit. Upper year students, your own classmates, professors, student services, career services, and many others will make you feel like you are a part of the U of A community and will always be there to support you when you need it. 
Now that you know a little bit about me and my experiences, I will pass things on to my co MC, Tyler Tremel. Thanks, Marlene. Um, I'd first like to acknowledge the Rowan Treaty 6 territory, and I'd like to extend a welcome to you and say toa. My name is Tyler, and I'd like to again congratulate you all for getting to this point and being here today. It is an honor and a privilege to share the microphone with our distinguished speakers and to be among those first to welcome you to your law school. And I really mean that. This is your law school. This is where you will start your incredibly humbling career as a lawyer, where you will be given the opportunity to shape your future, and where you will become a part of a community unparalleled anywhere else. Before going any further, I must acknowledge the family members here today. This is not just a celebration of the future lawyers sitting in this room, but also a recognition of the astonishing effort our families have put in to support us. As proud as I was of getting into law school, I was even more thankful for my, my family for standing behind me. 23 years was a long time to put up with someone like me. So to all of you family members, I hope I can speak on behalf of us all and say thank you. I would like to now share a little about myself. I'm a proud member of the Métis Nation of Alberta. I was born and raised in Lethbridge, which is located about two hours south of Calgary. While growing up, I had never met, talked to, or even really seen a lawyer before, unless you count watching Judge Judy with my grandma during lunch. Some of you are like, of course it does. <laughs> <laughs> my dad's words of wisdom to me have always been, I don't care what you do, as long as you're happy doing it. So thinking I would be happy as a doctor, I enrolled at the University of Lethbridge to get my biology degree. After about two years into my degree, I really started to question whether I was happy. I was barreling forward without reflecting on whether I had the right intentions. Around this time, I started taking classes in philosophy out of interest. And eventually, I declared that as my minor. It was one of those kid in a candy shop situations. Everything seemed interesting. I felt very passionate about debating ideas and being an advocate. To make a long story short, uh, it got to the point where I was getting into heated debates with one of my best friends in a tiny study room at 3 in the morning while I was supposed to be studying for physics. Eventually, I think she just got sick of me and she just said, go to law school and argue it there. So I did. <laughs> now on to what you really want to know. Why you Alberta law? Ultimately, this is the decision you're facing. I'm a very straightforward person, so I'm not going to pull any punches with you. Pick this school. Student to student, pick this school. You will not get a friendlier student body, a more knowledgeable faculty, and a, or a better overall educational experience anywhere else. I think I maybe knew 10 people at my previous school, but here it's different. Here I fit in. I regularly stop into my professor's offices and just talk. And as crazy as it sounds, they actually listen. They know their students by name, they help them out when they struggle, and they support them always. Moving on to summer jobs, our career services team helped me find employment with relative ease and low stress. If you're a hands-on learner like me, you'll be very interested to know about our Student Legal Services Program, or SLS. Within a month of being in law school, I was already in front of a real judge at a real courthouse representing a real client. Honestly, SLS should sell you on this school alone. And lastly, the amount of high-quality extracurricular clubs and activities is remarkable. Personally, I chose to get involved with the Indigenous Law Students Association, or ILSA, as well as our intramural hockey team, one of the intramural hockey teams, the litigators, the other being the tortfeasors. But those are only two of the dozens of groups organized and run by our students. I really encourage you today to ask questions. Talk to our staff and current students, or even come find me, I'd be very happy to chat. I'd like to now introduce you to Dean Payton. Dr. Paul Payton was appointed Dean of Law and Wilbur Fee Boker Professor of Law at the University of Alberta in July 2014. An expert on legal ethics, professional responsibility, the regulation of lawyers, and corporate governance, he has written and spoken extensively on these issues and has been recognized for his work in the United States, Canada, and England. His prior professional academic appointments include inaugural, inaugural Vice Provost at the University of the Pacific in California, Professor of Law and Director of the Ethics Across the Professions Initiative at the University of the Pacific, McGeorge School of Law in Sacramento, 
and assistant professor in the Faculty of Law at Queen's University. Between 2009 and 2011, he was chair of the Canadian Bar Association's National Ethics and Professional Responsibility Committee and was report reporter to the American Bar Association Ethics 2020 Commission between 2010 and 2012. He also chaired the Canada-US Fulbright Academic Selection Committee in 2016. There's more. Dr. Payton holds undergraduate and law degrees from the University of Toronto, a Master of Philosophy in International Relations from Cambridge, and Master's and Doctoral degrees in law from Stanford. Prior to entering the, the academy full-time, he practiced for a decade as a commercial litigant, as in-house counsel to PricewaterhouseCoopers, and as justice and social policy advisor to the Premier of Ontario. The recipient of numerous awards and recognitions, he received a Distinguished Service Award from the Ontario Bar Association in recognition of his contributions to the legal profession in July. And in 2015, he was a finalist in Canadian Lawyer Top 25 Most Influential Lawyers in Canada. More recently, he was named a leader in diversity by the Federation of Asian Canadian Lawyers. And he will receive the highest individual award from the Canadian Corporate Council Association at its national conference next week in Toronto. Please welcome Dean Payton. Thank you very much indeed, and uh, my apologies for seeming a little awkward in this regard. Uh, I had surgery about a week and a half ago, so I'm using my little scooter to get around. Um, don't let it uh, impede halting me at some point along the day if you've got any questions. Congratulations to the admitted students of the University of Alberta Faculty of Law, Class of 2022. Doesn't that sound great? <laughs> class of 2022. I'm really glad you've joined us today, and we're excited that you're here. And as you've heard, my name is Paul Payton, and since 2014, it's been my privilege to serve as Dean of the Faculty of Law here at the University of Alberta. I'm delighted to welcome you and your partners, your families, your friends, those that you call family, into the U Alberta law community. Over the course of the day today, you'll be hearing from representatives of that community, students, alumni, faculty, and others, as you visit and tour the law center, attend the Knowledge Cafe, figure out what 1970s concrete brutalism can offer in terms of a building itself. <laughs> Let's just say when I came in as dean, renovations were high on the list. Um, and figure out what questions are right for you to ask. You've all been admitted, You're all, your ticket's punched, but I know that some of you may be still considering whether or not that this is the right place for you. Today's your chance to really, really figure out, again, what questions are there, what lingers. If you're from outside of Edmonton, what's it like living here? What's it like being at the Law Center? Can I live in a city that has the Oilers as their hockey team? <laughs> Born and raised in Toronto, I'm still a Maple Leafs fan, so there you go. Um, those of you from Calgary, welcome. We're behind you all the way this year. Um, <laughs> this is the fifth and final time that I'm going to be able to extend greetings as Dean. My turn finishes in June. But one of the things that I'm really proud of is that we've set the stage for your success. My commitment to you Alberta Law students, when I moved to Edmonton from California, picture that, <laughs> winter in Edmonton, winter in California. I moved here to become dean because of my commitment to the students and the future of this faculty. I'm devoted to preserving the best of an incredible past while preparing you for a challenging future in a dynamic profession. As you've heard, my own research and writing and a lot of the work that I've done has focused on the future of the legal profession, the future of legal education, and legal ethics. Who knew that in the course of this year we would host both Jody Rebold Wilson or sorry, Jody Wilson-Raybould and David Lametti, 90 days apart, in this room to talk about ethics and the role of the Attorney General and Minister of Justice. Who knew that we'd be talking about ethics for lawyers and whether or not the confidentiality of judicial appointments mattered? Who knew that we would be talking about the rule of law as something more than simply rhetorical flourish? This is the world you have the opportunity to enter, a vocabulary that you get to learn from people who are committed to ensuring that you not only learn the law, but learn how to be a professional, 
how to practice ethically, how to practice responsibly, how to treat each other with respect. Those are all things that you are likely already bringing to the law school experience and that you'll hopefully have the opportunity in many ways throughout your time, should you choose to come here, to develop, to grow, and to change. And you will carry that with you through the rest of your careers. Before I launch into why further, you should join us here in September. I want to make a few introductions. So if I can encourage the student services team, if you're all at the back, um, I re this is a good chance for me, and probably my only chance today, to really thank the team for putting the Dean's Welcome together. And so, leading the event, Courtney Wagner, wave Courtney, who's our student recruiter and financial advisor. Ray Beaumont, who's our student services team lead. I saw Ray earlier on. Um, Carlin Elford, who's our law life coordinator. She works with student groups directly in terms of a lot of the activities that will end up going on. Gloria Strathern at the back, who's our prizes and awards coordinator. You want to get to know Gloria? <laughs> Remember those words, prizes and awards. Gloria is, no, she's absolutely wonderful and is able to provide all sorts of information about financial support that you may not even know existed. So incredibly committed to our students, won a university-wide award a few years ago. She's a real gem and a real value to this faculty and somebody you will want to know. Uh, Michael Rajan, our student services assistant, I think is outside. Michael is a real fire plug. I suggested actually when I had a scooter that you know what I was missing was ribbons and a bell. I should have known better. Michael was on it. Um, <laughs> April Gladue, who I think well, she was here. She was with our indigenous students upstairs um, for a, a pre-welcome event. She's our indigenous student academic and cultural support advisor, works with the Department of Justice here in Edmonton, and serves in a really important capacity here. They're all members of the student services team and others whose role is there to support your success in law school. You're gonna meet them on tours today. You're gonna to meet a lot of people today. It's like taking a sip of water from a fire hose. There's a lot coming at you. Drink as much as you can, take a cup, and try and figure out who you need to come back and talk to because they're all available not only today but afterwards as well. You're gonna meet faculty, you're gonna meet staff, and most importantly, I think in many respects, you're gonna meet students and alumni who can tell you all about their experiences in ways that I won't be able to reflect and that you might not get in terms of insight from anybody else. But taking a look across the stage, we've got students and alum recent alumni. There are others who will be joining later on in the day. Thank you all for your help and support. Their commitment speaks volumes about the passion that our students have for this community and for this faculty. When you come and join us, notice how we've changed into the not if, but the when you come and join us, you're joining a distinguished community that's more than 100 years in the making. The community has a stellar tradition of learning the law and, importantly, engaging in service to the community, locally, nationally, and internationally. During your time here, you're going to meet an extraordinary group of people, our faculty, our staff, our alumni, who are eager to support you and who are committed to your professional and personal success. And I emphasize the latter as well. I'm going to come back and talk about a few particular initiatives. You're going to be supported and sustained by an excellent group of scholars and researchers. We have a number of award-winning teachers on our faculty because a commitment to teaching is a, and teaching excellence is a point of particular pride. Not all faculties have that. Many faculties have outstanding researchers and scholars, but I've hired 11 new faculty members over the last three years, which is absolutely incredible. It's a third of our faculty complement. And one of the things that I'm really proud of is that they're not only already setting the world on fire in terms of the research and scholarship that they're doing and engaged in, but they're passionately committed teachers. They want you to learn and they want to help you to learn. You've got to do the work. Don't kid yourselves, law school's not easy, but you want to be at a place where you're gonna find that access, that openness, that kind of support. You know, I'm always wary of using any kind of examples. I used to go back to the paper chase, but then realized that you know, a generation that's been brought up on suits won't necessarily um, resonate that way. They are bringing back street legal, so um, you can do with that what you will. Um, I think the other thing as well, in terms of the, the teaching excellence, it's really important. You're gonna learn from your colleagues. The people that you're sitting with right now you don't know yet. I could stop right now and have you do introductions, but we'll save that for a little later on. You will learn as much, if not more, from each other through the experience. And when the students talk about community and collegiality, there are a lot of places that talk about that. Here they mean it. I've had the privilege of being involved in different communities, different law schools in both Canada and the States, the UK. This is really quite extraordinary in terms of the kind of supportive commitment that the students make to each other and to 
the others who are following behind. Our community also includes a cohort of approximately 7,500 alumni, leaders, and others who continue to support and advocate for us in Canada and across the world. Former Chief Justice of Canada, the Right Honourable Beverly McLaughlin, is one of our most distinguished graduates. She reinforced her continued connection by accepting my invitation to speak at the law school on the first day of orientation in September 2017. We were her last first day as Chief Justice. What a wonderful way to kind of close that circle. The newest member of the Supreme Court of Canada, the Honourable Justice Sheila Martin, is an alumna from our LLM program. The Honourable Mr. Justice Russell Brown, also a Supreme Court Justice, was a very distinguished member of our faculty until 2013. He addressed our incoming class of 2021 this past September during orientation, and I've extended an open invitation to him and to the others to be here anytime they want. You will have the opportunity to meet judges at all levels of court, but having that kind of access to Supreme Court justices just doesn't happen everywhere. The Honourable Catherine Fraser, Chief Justice of Alberta. The Honourable Mary Moreau, Chief Justice of the Court of Queen's Bench. Chief Wilton Littlechild, the Truth and Reconciliation of Ca uh, Commission of Canada Commissioner. Entrepreneur Daryl Cates, they're all alumni. So too are Alan Wachowicz, QC, the former Chief Justice of the Court of Queen's Bench, and Marie Gordon, QC, both of whom were awarded the Alberta Order of Excellence in 2018 and 2017 separately. Our graduates are amongst the most distinguished members of the bar, not only here in Edmonton and in Calgary, but in Vancouver and Toronto and in smaller centres across Western Canada. They are the ones arguing the precedent-setting criminal law cases you'll study. They structure and ne negotiate the deals that drive business in new and exciting directions. Uh, a number of our graduates actually, and I always have to be a little careful when I'm doing this, are now on the legal team at Aurora Cannabis, so you never know what directions your legal career might take you. Um, they write legislation, they provide policy advice to government leaders locally, provincially, and nationally, and they serve their clients and the public in all sorts of critically important ways every day. They, and now you, will have the opportunity to shape and, sh shape and change not only the law, but the lives of the clients you're representing and the communities of which they're a part. That's something that I hope each and every student takes away from their time at U Alberta Law, that communities matter that helping to build healthy ones is an important part of our responsibility to the profession that we've chosen and to the public trust that we serve as a result of the privilege of a law degree. I'm proud of the ways that this faculty and its students, alumni, staff, and others endeavor to live up to that tremendous responsibility we have as members, not only of an academic community, but as members of the broader legal community. I'm also very pleased to say that their accomplishments are recognized and admired by others. Over the last four years, three of our full-time faculty have received the Distinguished Service Award for Legal Scholarship from the Canadian Bar Association Alberta and the Law Society of Alberta for their research. In addition to the external recognition of their research and scholarship, all three, Professors Tamara Buckwald, Barbara Billingsley, and Mitch McInnes, have received teaching awards, either from within the faculty or university-wide. A few other examples. Last November, Patricia Parody who teaches human rights and serves as executive director of our Center for Constitutional Studies, and you'll learn more about the Center for Constitutional Studies and the Health Law Institute on your tour today. She was honored with the Women in Law Leadership Award for a career focused on human rights. Kenchana Fernando is a lawyer with the Department of Justice here in Edmonton, but she serves as a sessional instructor at the faculty teaching one of our advanced advocacy courses. She was also the recipient of a Women in Law Leadership Award. Our faculty members are at the forefront of innovation and teaching. We've got many senior scholars with decades of wisdom to impart, but we also have that new generation of rising stars I mentioned. We've renewed our faculty, and you are going to be the beneficiaries of this full on by adding 11 new professors. A lot of details, look them up, but let me give you a few highlights. Hadley Friedland, Joshua Nichols, and Darcy Lindbergh are producing cutting edge research in Indigenous law, including Aboriginal law and Indigenous legal theory and legal traditions. Professor Cam Jeffries is already recognized internationally as an expert in, in environmental law, notably in marine environmental law and oceans. Think of that, an oceans expert on the prairies. We're all here. He was also responsible for launching in 2018 a new experiential learning opportunity for our students in oceans law that actually took place on site on Vancouver Island, integrating classroom theory and learning with on the ground or in the water experiences. Professor Anna Lund is one of the new hires, who is already receiving recognition for her groundbreaking work in bankruptcy and insolvency law in relation to both gambling and to health expenses, 
and she received the faculty's highest internal award for teaching in only her first year in the faculty. They were blasting out of the gate. Professor Malcolm Lavois is defending his PhD at Harvard next month. He's breaking new trails in consideration of property law as it affects oil and gas and pipeline development in Canada. You know, one of those minor issues that hits the press from time to time. Jess Eisen, who's also defending her PhD thesis at Harvard Law in a few weeks, is an internationally renowned scholar in the relatively new field of animal law, with a focus on law and social change in the area of animal agriculture. She works as well with our Faculty of Agriculture and Life Sciences. You may have heard her on CBC last week. The show From the Trenches profiled her research. Jen Razzo researches discretion, regulatory technologies, and administrative decision making, with a particular focus on discretion and administration of social welfare programs. Hilary Nye is a legal philosophy expert who joined us from the London School of Economics, where she had a, an LSE fellowship. Peter Shigeti, who earned his SJD from Harvard in 2015, Researches geoecological information in property law, environmental law, and international law. He's been a, Harvard, a Hauser Fellow at NYU, a Bolton Fellow at McGill, and at Harvard. And they're all approachable. Those doors are open, and they want to help you learn. These names may not mean a lot to you now. They will next year when you have them in first-year classes in criminal law and constitutional law and property and other uh, in other subjects, but they're amongst the best legal educators in this country. You're going to have them as mentors and guides from the very start. And these scholars will help you build a solid foundation on which to base a successful legal career, whatever success means to you. For those of you who are involved in and engaged in research now or want to be while you're here, the, the list of subjects is endless, ranging from running of corporations to the running of countries, from legal theory to the law of taxation, from indigenous and aboriginal law to biotechnology policy. All of this research is relevant and influential in law reform and policy development. In addition to the Center for Constitutional Studies and the Health Law Institute, the Alberta Law Reform Institute actually sits in this faculty up on the fourth floor. And we've developed two internships for students to actually work on law reform projects for credit during their time here. There are other research opportunities which each, with each one of the centers, and I encourage you as you're visiting them or visiting their representatives today to ask about the possibilities. Health Law Institute in particular attracts some national and international recognition for its work, especially because of the renown of its director, Professor Tim Caulfield. Tim's a highly respected health law academic, and in addition, he has his own series on Netflix and a New York Times bestselling book, Why is Gwyneth Paltrow Wrong About Everything? Question mark. I note for the, yes, the lawyers, the question mark got added at the end. One of the calls to action of the Truth of and Reconciliation Commission of Canada was directed at Canadian law schools. And while we've got a great deal of work yet to do, we've made great strides over the last five years. As dean, I've endeavored to reinforce and indeed bolster our commitment to ensuring that all of our students enter the legal profession with knowledge of Indigenous laws and legal traditions. If you're working on the prairies in whatever capacity, representing Indigenous clients, representing clients who are dealing with Indigenous contracts, dealing with criminal law. This is important to know and to understand, not just for the practicality of practice, but as lawyers and as people who have a responsibility to the broader community. We've developed, and we still have a long way to go. But the three new professors I mentioned hiring, in addition to Professor Kathy Bell, are doing really important work. One that's going to be officially launched later on this spring is focused on collaboration with Indigenous communities, going out, being engaged with communities, to build on laws and legal traditions and to help with and for community shape the ways in which governance and intersection can work. Broadly, access to experiential learning opportunities is another reason to come here. And we do it a little differently. The way in which we've approached experiential learning is to build on the foundation. Other places do it differently, and we acknowledge and appreciate that. But during my time as dean, we've carefully broadened our range of opportunities. In 2018, we became the first Canadian law school to offer an internship with the Office of the Judge Advocate General of Canada. For those of you unfamiliar with the role, the JAG serves the Canadian military in a role somewhat analogous to that of the Chief Justice of the Supreme Court of Canada. It's hard to overstate the importance of that work, and our JAG interns, to a term, so for a year, are already making valuable contributions to our military justice system while gaining experience available through no other law school in the country. We also have four credit externship placements with the Alberta Human Rights Commission, the Alberta Utilities Commission, the Alberta Law Reform Commission, and one under development with Tech Edmonton. 
that adds on to the students' opportunities, uh, the, the opportunities students have through student legal services, which I'll mention a little more about and you'll hear a lot more about today in a moment. So adding carefully considered experiential learning opportunities that complement our focused academic environment is really important and I think something that you want to know in terms of how you're going to choose or approach your, your time in law school. Careers, always important, point of pressure. When I arrived in 2014, we had no career services center. We had one career services officer for 525 JD students. Okay, so remember, I arrived in 2014 just before an economic downturn. The fact that I arrived in California in 2008 just before an economic downturn leads people to wonder where I'm going next. <laughs> We've expanded that complement in career services fourfold. And I recently hired, Bruce who's standing in the doorway, the former chief of staff to the Judge Advocate General of Canada to take over leadership of our career services office. I always stand up a little straighter when I'm speaking to Bruce. Incredibly approachable, already deeply engaged, and plugging into firms in Calgary, in Vancouver, in Edmonton, and smaller centers throughout. The work that we've done and the commitment that our staff has done to help students succeed has made a big difference. Even in an economic downturn, last year, over 98% of the students who wanted articling positions who were from the graduating class got them. That's an incredible record. We've been at 95% for the last couple of years. Numbers this year are looking equally strong. So in that respect, at least, we can draw on that diaspora of alumni. And there are a couple of years in there when things were getting really rough in Calgary in particular, where I was able to reach out and our team was able to reach out very directly to alumni to say, please take a student. You may not be able to give back financially to us, but take a student on. Help them actually through that article. And that worked. And also built that kind of engagement that you'll have with members of the broader legal community. We also help our students succeed in other ways. As one measure, for the past four years, I'm really proud that after a seven-year drought, a U Alberta law graduate has been selected to clerk at the Supreme Court of Canada. A couple weeks ago, Gina Murray, uh, who actually, and again, I know that there are a number of you who are coming back to law school as a second or sometimes third career. Gina had children during law school. One of our most outstanding students, co-editor of the Alberta Law Review, knows how to get things done um, and has just been selected as a clerk at the Supreme Court of Canada. We have supports and supportive opportunities for students who are later in careers or later in life. I hate the acronym, but they call themselves law and older. They've got to come up with something different. But there is community within community for those who may not necessarily relate always or on every level to those who don't have children or family responsibilities. So that's also important to know. Brandon Rogerson and Dilla Gibbs are clerking during the 2019-2020 term, and they follow Ashton Manus, who clerked there in 2018-19. We also place students every year and increasingly every year with the Alberta Court of Appeal, with the Court of Queen's Bench, with the Federal Court, with the Provincial Court. These are wonderful opportunities to work with judges directly right on graduation and to launch your career in a particularly important way. We have that reputation of pr producing the academically outstanding students who have those opportunities. One of the things that employers look for, and I was, as was mentioned, I was an associate and then a partner practicing commercial litigation on Bay Street and actually served on our student hiring committees. And this has been the same through a couple generations. Employers look for what you've been involved in outside the classroom. And it makes an enormous difference. They want to know that you're book smart. They want to know that you're keen, that you're interested. But you're going to have to deal with clients. So how can you relate to them? What do you do and what passions do you bring? Many of you will do incredible and amazing things before law school. One of the things that's really interesting, we've had this run of people who have been professional ballet dancers. This year in the first year class, we've got the former Canadian coach of the skeleton team that was at the Pyeongchang Olympics, and one of the first year students was on the women's team. I always wondered about the sanity check in terms of doing skeleton. For those of you who don't know the sport, you're going down face first on something the size of a cafeteria tray around really icy corners. If that does not prepare you for law school, I don't know what does. <laughs> and they start off on day one in exactly the same place as every other student landing here. You go through this together. A few other opportunities, and I'm remiss if I don't mention them, and you're going to hear more about them today. Student Legal Services has been mentioned. It's its 50th year. 
learn about SLS. And I say always to students, you can get involved in sports, you can get involved in cultural activities. I encourage you to do that. But there are three opportunities that are unique to the law school experience. Student legal services, law review, and mooting. I'll start with mooting. For the benefit of those who don't know what mooting is, it's a simulated court argument presented before very real, very tough appeal court level judges and sometimes before Supreme Court of Canada judges in the competitive moot uh, uh, process. So essentially it's real life practice at everything from research to written and oral arguments with all the stress you might expect. In the past, two, when I started, we had 35 students try out for our competitive teams. We couldn't fill them. Last year, over 100 tried out. And it was a banner year. In the last two years, notably, we've kind of shattered records on the competitive moot scene. Um, we won five moots, including four national and one provincial moot. We had a quarterfinal finish at the international Oxford property moot. This year, we again uh, won the national Gale Cup moot in uh, which is a, a, one of the most prestigious competitions. And as Canadian representatives, our team will be heading to the Commonwealth Law Moot in Zambia in a couple of weeks. Student legal services is an important reminder of our responsibility as a public institution to build and serve the communities of which we're a part. It's an organization that was and is beloved by many alumni who are running law firms today. One pr practitioner recently said the very first question he asks when interviewing prospective articling students is, did you volunteer with SLS? They provide critical legal support for lower income Edmontonians. And for many of you, your work with SLS will be an opportunity, a portal, to gain insight into parts of our community that you've never engaged before. Those lessons will stay with you, whatever you end up doing for the rest of your careers. Sports, music, community service, cultural, political, lots of other things with which you can be involved. You'll have the chance to learn from others who visit to offer insight, perspective, and experience. Uh, we've had a range of speakers this year. We had Richard Painter, who you will have seen as MSNBC and CNN commentator, former White House Ethics Counsel uh, to George W. Bush, actually at this podium last Monday. We've had a legal innovation conference in January, hosted with the Law and Business Student Association. I worked with the students to attract lawyers, cybersecurity authorities, computer science, artificial intelligence, technology experts from across Canada to discuss how technology is transforming the delivery of legal services. Our Indigenous Law Student Association hosts an annual speaker series, a week of incredible speakers, usually based around a particular theme that offers, again, wonderful insight. I could go on. I'm known for doing that, apparently. But that's just a small sample of the activities, academic and otherwise, taking place here at the Law Center, and indeed, with and together with you Alberta law graduates around the world. There's something for everyone. And we know this is a place you can call home. During your law school journey, our professors, staff, and alumni are here to support you. We're preparing you to think, to write, to advocate, to be flexible, nimble, and ready to face whatever challenges come. It's an extraordinary and indeed very exciting time of transformation for the legal profession and for us at the faculty. You will also be with incredible students who are sitting in your place today and don't worry about the imposter syndrome. Everybody goes through that. Like, did they sort of not read my application correctly? Did they kind of mistranspose a number? Really, am I supposed to be in this seat? Yes, you are. You've earned a place here. You will develop and grow, and you will always encounter that imposter syndrome and deal with other challenges that come up. But one of the things I'm most proud of as well is that we've developed particular supports for our students while you're here. Mental health and wellness in the legal profession is a critical concern and finally is getting open discussion. Under my auspices, we launched a pilot program. So we've got an on-site psychologist who actually visits the law faculty and programming with and for our student mental health and wellness committee that makes a difference. It may not affect you, but it will likely affect somebody that's in your class or somebody that you're working with. And so having that open dialogue and fostering a conversation about how you can better be you know, better prepared to deal with the challenges, to develop resilience, to work with and for other people, to provide the kind of support that you're wanting to do is an important part of your learning here as well and will be part of the legacy that I try and leave behind. You're making an important and likely indeed life-altering decision to come here. Rest assured it's a good one. We're thrilled that you're here today. We hope that you choose, if you haven't really locked it down already, to join us. 
And if you've chosen to join us, thank you. Welcome. We look forward to, to having you here in September and your unique sp skills, experience, passions, and everyone who is here, regardless of race, creed, color, diversity, sexual orientation, whatever you are bringing, you are enriching our environment. This is a place that is for you. Equity, diversity, and inclusion are not just paid lip service here, but they matter. And you'll hear that in, in different ways uh, from the different student groups and from others throughout the day. Congratulations on being admitted. I really hope you enjoy the day. Thank you very much. Thank you, Dean Payton. Our next speaker is Robert Marquette. Rob recently graduated with his law degree from the University of Alberta. He also has a Bachelor of Science Honours degree in Biology from the University of Saskatchewan. He is the recipient of the Law Society of Alberta's President's Award, presented to a graduating student with satisfactory academic standing who demonstrated professional and ethical responsibilities as well as leadership. Prior to attending law school, Rob worked as a field technician for the Global Institute for Water Security. He was a TA with the Department of Biology at the University of Saskatchewan, and as a heavy equipment operator for ASL Paving Limited, all at a Saskatoon, Saskatchewan. Throughout his time here at the Faculty of Law, Rob was involved in a number of extracurricular groups, including rugby with the Golden Barristers, singing and acting in law show, and volunteering with student legal services. He also took part in competitive mooting, taking part in the Jessup International Law Moot during his second and third years. In his final year, he served as the Executive Director of Law Show and the President of the Law Students Association. He is currently finishing his articles with Alberta Justice and Solicitor General, and is currently in his solicitor rotation with the Environmental Legal Team. Ladies and gentlemen, Robert. Good morning, class of 2022. That makes me feel old. I'm already 2018. It's already 40 years. That's crazy. All right. Well, first of all, I'll be the fourth person to congratulate you guys. And also welcome to the family and friends that have come with you to support you here today. It's a big decision if you haven't already make it, but made it, but hopefully you do. And I can turn around and congratulate the dean on your acceptance, kind of reverse the whole matter. Now. I may not be the best person to provide the perspective as an alumnus of the U of A. I mean, you've heard the dean list off alumnus that are way more important things that run heavy equipment at a pavement company. <laughs> but, and I mean, I'm not even a lawyer yet. I'm still an articling student. I spend more time in this school than I have out of it at this point. But I believe during the articling year is the best time to look back at what you had during your time at the school and allows you to sit back reflect and properly share that experience with students coming into it and, and other students that will spend three years of their life and how that experience is so invaluable going forward. Now, I have four months left of my article. And the article year and the subsequent years of junior practice are pretty stressful work. They're, they're isolating time. I mean, you've left law school where, for the most part, you have the same people taking classes with you. You see people in teammates, through sports and moots, performing in plays and other various activities. It's kind of similar to if you grew up in a small high school like I did, leaving high school, leaving a close undergrad program, or even leaving a family in a lot of senses. You, you just get to know people that well. And you venture out from that into the great unknown that is the practice of law. Now, during my articling year, I've had the great fortune of having a number of colleagues that I went to law school with here at the U of A not only in my same articling program, but in the same city in the same province. I've also had the blessing of having former classmates that have already been called to the bar in Alberta, Saskatchewan, British Columbia, Ontario, and New York. And whether it be providing assistance as we prepare for our bar admission courses, providing precedence for matters that we haven't encountered before, or simply getting together to catch up, and provide an ear or shoulder of support for a colleague in need, the bonds and friendships that were forged within this faculty have continued through the beginning of our blossoming careers. And I, after speaking with alumni of greater years than I, 
those bonds don't break. They continue throughout your career and your life. And I think that network starts here in the walls of the school. The culture within the U of A Faculty of Law is one that praises and endorses, and I'm going to use the buzzword, collegiality. Uh, teamwork, support, and open dialogue across all backgrounds, beliefs, opinions, and perspectives. This U of A characteristic provides a distinct advantage no matter where your career or life take you both in and outside of law. And make no mistake, the legal education in this school is second to none. Dean Payton listed off those professors, and I can vouch for the fact that not only are they brilliant minds, but those doors are always open. They will take time out of their day to help explain even the most simple of concepts to you. And I did that a number of times. But I think the big thing that this school provides, and it's something, the key difference separating from the other law schools in Canada, the U of A shows students that the practice of law isn't a competition to see who's quicker with wit or has a more extensive grasp or memory of case names and principles. And those are all important things. But the practice of law really boils down to people working together to solve problems. To solve problems for other people, to solve problems for companies, to solve problems for government, to solve problems of the world at large. The U of A fosters this teamwork mentality, whether it be supporting one another to be the best you can be, or supporting one another to come to a shared goal. Every single one of you sitting in this lecture hall is academically and intellectually gifted. You don't need any tra training or education further to tell you that. It's, it's clear you're here. And you'll learn legal concepts and lessons no matter what law school you attend. But attending the U of A provides you with the experience to work and interact with applying those legal education concepts with other people. And I think that's one of the things that's sorely missed in so many legal educations. Today, the faculty is going to march out its best and brightest. Your tour guides will be passionate advocates of the school and of their various student groups they take part in. The student groups will make their best pitches, take advantage of their experiences at the faculty, ask them questions about what they liked about the school, what they don't like, what they would change, what they wouldn't. Ask them if they would come back to the U of A if they were to start anew. Part of the reason I list these questions is that I know that for everything a student might wish to change, there will be four things they wouldn't. And for every reason they wouldn't pick the U of A again, there will be four reasons that they would never choose anywhere else. For everything they would change on that note, they're already working towards changing those things from the inside of the faculty. Everybody here is engaged, ambitious. You won't feel out of sorts for a moment. I know this faculty takes in the best and brightest and prepares them not only for a legal career, but also for the world that the profession of law exists in, one where you have to work together as part of a greater whole. I loved my time at the U of A Faculty of Law. It changed the way I see the world. Yes, I learned a lot of Latin phrases and big words, but I also learned how to tackle problems and work with people, and I think that's absolutely invaluable as you go forward. Law is a wonderful profession, and I cannot think of a better place to start it than at the University of Alberta Faculty of Law. Once again, my most sincere congratulations on your acceptance, and maybe one day it'll be one of you standing up here encouraging people to start their legal career at the U of A. Thank you. Quick story about Rob. I don't know if you'd remember this, but uh, when I, uh, in my first year, um, I was walking down the hall, and I think I'd only met Rob maybe once before, and um, I was walking down the hall, and he looked at me and said, oh, hey, Tyler, in typical Rob fashion. I was kind of like... And... Uh, I said, oh, hey, hey, Rob. Um, and I later found out that that's a very common thing in the school. Um, the upper years really welcome the first, uh, the first year, so that was never forgotten. <laughs> um, now on to an another very well-respected student, um, Alyssa Kim. Um, Allie, as she's known, is in her third year of JD program at the University of Alberta and is the president of the Law Students Association. Prior to, prior to law school, Alyssa trained as a professional ballet dancer with Canada's National Ballet School and the School of American Ballet in New York. She also obtained a Bachelor of Arts degree from the University of Alberta with, this, with distinction in English and Gender Studies. In law school, she worked as a research assistant for Dean Paul Payton, acted as a director for Law Show, and represented the University of Alberta at the Wilson Moot 2018 with her team, where they won first place overall and she placed as a top 10 oralist. Upon graduation, Ali will be articling in Toronto at a national full service firm. Please welcome Ali. OK. 
Okay. So welcome, class of 2022. As previously mentioned, my name is Alyssa Kim, but I also go by Allie around the faculty, and I am the Law Students Association president for this year. I'm going to echo everyone for like the sixth time and saying congratulations. It is well deserved, and you never have to write the LSAT again, so that's something worth celebrating. <laughs> I'm very excited to welcome you all and to have the opportunity to speak a little bit about our faculty. I will begin uh, by telling you just briefly how I got to UAlberta Law. So as previously mentioned, I actually wanted to be a professional ballet dancer and law was so not on my mind in any way. When I was 12, I moved to Toronto and I danced with Canada's National Ballet School for a couple of years and then I moved to New York uh, where I danced with the School of American Ballet, which is the trainee program for New York City Ballet. And when I was there, I was totally convinced that, you know, this is the best time of my life. Like, this is what I'm supposed to be doing. I, oh, I even met, <laughs> I forgot about this, I even met Natalie Portman and Mila Kunis when they were filming Black Swan at my school. So it's kind of like, how do you top that? Like, I've just peaked now, so. But then circumstances change, and I decided to go back into academics. Undergrad was a good experience for me, but I didn't really feel like I had found a passion yet, something that could really evolve into a long-term career path. It just wasn't the way that I felt about dance. So that's when the idea of law school was presented to me by, of course, my parents. And it was definitely something that intrigued me. I had definitely watched a lot of Law and Order, like Legally Blonde a thousand times, and of course, Suits. Uh, don't know if anyone watches that anymore. <laughs> but, so I had this really Hollywood idea of what the legal realm was, and then with that, I decided to take my LSAT, I applied to various schools across Canada, and then I waited with this idea that I was gonna be the next Harvey Specter. Like I said, getting into law school is a huge accomplishment. It's a big moment and it comes with a lot of big decisions. And the first one, as previously mentioned, is where should I start my legal career? Where should I go to law school? It's so weird for me because I actually remember uh, coming to Dean's Welcome, I was like sitting somewhere over there, I was completely overdressed. Like I know some of you guys were talking about it in the face group yesterday and like I had no idea how to dress. The only person who was as dressed up as I was was Dean Payton probably, so it was one of those situations. Um, but it was this day, three years ago, that made the decision very easy for me. It was super clear that this was the place that I was going to start my legal career because it would help me develop my passion and kind of find my way again. So how did I know this, and what can you expect from being a U Alberta Law student? Although there are so many facets, I only have so much time, so I'm only going to talk about kind of two things that I think encompass U of A, uh, which is community and uh, opportunity. So starting with opportunity, over the next few hours, you'll hear a lot of promises of many things. And if there's one thing that I want you to take away from today, it's that U of A really means it, and they don't take it lightly when they promise things to their students. Being here has enabled me to experience things that I honestly never thought would happen. Uh, just to name a quick few, last year, Kim and I, uh, who will speak to you about mooting in a little bit, went to compete at a national mock appeal competition against all law schools across Canada. We advanced to the finals with the University of Toronto, and I was actually able to present my case in front of the Chief Justice Wagner of the Supreme Court of Canada. It was like the coolest thing that I've ever done, which probably shows you like how much of a nerd I've become. Um, but we also won, and that was a really great feeling. I've had the privilege of meeting with some of the most prominent women in the legal community through my work with Dean Payton on the Women in Law Speaker Series. And hearing these women's stories and kind of seeing them inspire my classmates with them is something that I know I will carry throughout my career. And finally, uh, I have worked on Bay Street in Toronto and will be returning there for articles in a building that was used as one of the locations where they film suits, so my aspirations to become Harvey Specter like kind of came true. <laughs> Um, in all seriousness though, these opportunities that U of A provided to me, um, through them I found my passion again, I found my way. And I think that speaks to what's at the heart of the faculty here, is that they put their students first, they care about them first, and they remember that everybody has very different goals, and then they say, okay, how are we gonna make this happen for you? I could keep listing examples because there's no shortage of them, but my point is, whatever ambitions you do have for yourself, the U of A can help you get there and they'll help you get there with enthusiasm and through community. 
So that moves me to my second point. Despite what social media might tell you about law school, it's actually very, very supportive and a lot of fun. You will find fantastic mentors in our faculty, from professors who take the time to explain principles to you like over and over again. Um, as an aside, I will mention that the textbooks that are used across Canada for things like property and bankruptcy and contracts, those professors who wrote them, they teach us here. So that's pretty amazing. Uh, to the upper years who are always more than happy to give you a rare can, for those of you that don't know what that is, that's like a condensed annotated notes like package. All of your exams in law school are open books, surprise, um, which is really awesome. Uh, but everybody kind of passes these around through the generations. Um, to Steve, who will always be there to cheer you up and get you a coffee, you guys will meet him later today. And to the extremely patient mood coaches who encourage you in many moments of frustration. Further, you will work very hard in law school, it's true, but you should find comfort in knowing that that hard work is always going to be accompanied by really good friends as well as copious amounts of Domino's pizza. I actually remember as an anecdote in December of 1L working on my first legal research and writing memo and I like locked myself up in the library and I said, okay, I am not going to leave here until it's perfect and totally done. But then some of my now best friends decided to kind of drag me out to our annual ugly Christmas sweater party that we have downstairs in the gavel. And I remember trading my like three day old leggings with Cheeto stains or whatever on the side for um, a Walmart light up Christmas sweater. It was like super hideous. And I was in the gavel and I was kind of looking at all the bright people who were around me that I'd met so far. And I remember thinking to myself, man, I'm like really screwed for this memo. <laughs> Just joking. I remember looking at everyone and feeling astonished and very happy with the fact that I'd made so many true friends. And I felt very lucky to be so encouraged and to have had so much laughter and joy already incorporated into my short time at law school. Um, something we really pride ourselves on is that we're very kind to each other. And I think that that's a really great thing. So I think that the thing that I'm trying to get across about U of A today is that it's special because you can do a lot of good and have a lot of impact through this program with the help of a never failing support system, but it's completely up to you what that might look like. So whether that be helping those in our lower income community by working with student legal services or raising money for law show um, or drag show for charity by trying out dance for the first time, um, or even advocating out in broader Edmonton just for the things that you really think matter. I could keep going, uh, but I will wrap up now because I think it's about that time. So in sum, being a law student at the U of A is a great privilege and I really do think that each of you would accomplish great and important things here and find the things that you need. Uh, thank you for laughing today in all the places that I bracketed pause for laughter. <laughs> and please ask the questions that you need to during this Dean's Welcome uh, to see what opportunities the U of A can offer you. I'm going to be around like all day. Um, I'm going to do a tour group too. So if you guys see me, please say hi, ask anything. Nothing's too candid, uh, within reason. And this is a very exciting time. We're really happy to be able to show you kind of what our school is all about. And congratulations again. Thank you, Allie. Our next speaker is Sarah McFadden. Sarah McFadden is currently a second year student at the University of Alberta Faculty of Law. Sarah completed her Bachelor of Commerce at the King's University while playing collegiate volleyball. Since entering law school, Sarah has been heavily involved in student legal services. This past summer, she worked for the organization as a civil and family caseworker, and she currently sits as the executive coordinator. Ladies and gentlemen, Sarah. Good morning, everyone. I, like all of my colleagues here, er, I'm gonna congratulate you. This is no small feat. You guys all deserve to be here. It's a huge accomplishment, and I just want to say that we're all very excited to meet you. I'm sure all of you have your reasons for being here today. For some of you, it was a natural next step after undergrad. For others, maybe your family members are lawyers or judges in the community, and you wanna carry on their legacy. Some of you are here because you want to make money, and that is a totally valid reason. But regardless, I believe that most of you are here because you want to help people in some capacity. 
I personally wanted to go to law school because I realized how lucky I am as an individual and I wanted to help others who maybe haven't been given the same standing in life as me. And I've gotten to do just that through student legal services. In a nutshell, SLS is a not-for-profit ran by law students here at the U of A and we provide legal information and assistance to the low-income community in Edmonton. And we're one of the largest student-run not-for-profit organizations in Canada, which I think is pretty amazing. We are powered by over 270 law students each year, and we get to help a lot of people in a lot of different areas of law. Something that's really great about SLS and that you've heard a lot about already is it's a great opportunity for experiential learning. I personally learn best by doing, and while you need to learn the law in class, SLS lets you apply it. We have several different projects in multiple areas of law, and we get to do things from helping people finish their divorce on the family side of things, all the way to um, helping someone with their summary conviction on the criminal side of things, and there's a whole lot in between that. In terms of commitment, which I'm sure you guys are all wondering about, student legal services can be as big or as small of a part of your law school experience as you want it to be. For me, it's been the majority of my law school experience, but I believe even if you just want to dip your toe in, you're still going to get a tremendous amount out of it. I know a lot of you are going to want to focus on your academics next year, but as my colleagues have also said, I really, really encourage you to get involved with extracurriculars, including SLS. Trust me, it is not supposed to be stressful. When you volunteer with us, you uh, are supported by upper years like me who have signed up to spend a whole lot of time supervising you and basically just being there for you if you ever get stressed or overwhelmed, whether it's for SLS or school, we're there for you no matter what. I may be biased, but I truly believe that doing SLS is a invaluable experience for anyone who's at the U of A. There is no other opportunity that you will have in law school where you get to sit down with a real person who has an actual legal issue, who has nowhere else to turn. My time at SLS has made me realize that I'm an extremely privileged person. The people I've worked with are part, a, part of a very vulnerable demographic that I may very well have never interacted with without this organization. This is an extremely prestigious profession and we are all in a very privileged place being in law school and I can speak for myself and say that we don't generally interact with individuals we don't generally interact with individuals who have mental health problems or addictions issues or people who are just in a very difficult point in their lives. That is why SLS is such an important tool in enabling us to interact with people who are in situations completely different from our own. More than being an incredible learning experience, working with SLS has also been very gratifying. For the average person, navigating the court system is extremely difficult and intimidating on top of having a legal issue that you're dealing with. We make sure that people aren't alone in this. And this makes the experience of going to court a whole lot less scary for them. And the fact that I've been able to help multiple people get over that legal hurdle in their life has been so rewarding. And in my experience, every single person that I've helped has been just so grateful that they didn't have to go through this alone. So overall, having the opportunity to work for, work for SLS and volunteer with the organization has truly been one of the best things that's ever happened to me. And I genuinely think that at this point, it's the most important thing that I've done in my life so far. So. I really, really help, hope that you guys decide to come to the Faculty of Law at the University of Alberta next year and that you decide to volunteer with SLS. Um, if you want to know more um, about us, you can come uh, to our Knowledge Cafe stop. I'll be there with a bunch of my colleagues and we would love to tell you more about it. But thank you so much and again, congratulations. Thanks, Sarah. Um, I really do uh, really want to encourage you to ask about SLS. I did it and it was an, inc an incredible experience. It, it's uh, really unparalleled anywhere else. Um, also, before I go on to the, the next speaker, um, I kind of made an oversight in my introduction. I actually want to mention we have a third hockey team as well, not just the litigators, the tort fees. I miss the uh, Swift Justice, which is our women's team. Um, they encourage all uh, skill levels and they have a lot of fun. So. Uh, on to our next guest, uh, Kimberly Gozel. Uh, 
Kim is a third year law student in the faculty. She graduated from Simon Fraser University, majoring in sociology and minoring in criminology in 2015. Since starting in, in the faculty in the fall of 2016, she has made numerous contributions through her work as one of the 3L representatives of the Articling Committee, the 3L representative of the Equality and Respect Committee, a former member of the Recruitment Committee, the former student representative for the Advisory Selection Committee, and Kim has also been a member of the Indigenous Law Students Association and Women's Law Forum. In the past, Kim has worked in nonprofits, the federal government, and is currently a lifeguard with the city of Richmond in BC. She loves the water as a former competitive swimmer, and in her down, downtime, loves to spend quality time with her golden retriever, Nala. After graduating, she will be working at Borden Ladner Gervais in Vancouver. Please welcome Kim. Good morning, everyone. As you just heard, my name is Kim, and I'm a third year student here in the faculty. I'm also going to echo my colleagues and congratulate you on your admission to the University of Alberta, and I hope to see you here next year. So you did hear a little bit about mooting from Dean Payton, but I'm gonna reiterate some of the points that he made and uh, say that mooting is an opportunity to argue a mock case that is usually an appeal. And this is usually a three-step process. It starts with researching an area of law in depth and then using that research to write an argument in a document that's called a factum that is then submitted to the court. And then based on that factum, you have an opportunity to orally argue that case in front of judges who will periodically interrupt you to, and ask questions about the issues that they're struggling with in your case. Mooting has been a huge part of my experience here at the University of Alberta, and I've had the pleasure of representing U of A at two national moots. Last year, as Ali was saying, we were part of the Wilson moot team, and the Wilson is a moot where um, the issue pertains to Section 15 of the Charter or Equality Rights. Every year, lawyers work on crafting a problem that is based on a current issue in Canada. And last year, that issue was something that pertained to carding practices in Halifax and how it disproportionately affected black Nova Scotians. The amount of work that we put into that moot was extraordinary, and I was a little bit worried that I was going to have to unfriend Ali from my life because we were spending so many late nights together arguing the opposite side of the same issue. But all that hard work did pay off. As you heard Ali say, we won the competition overall, and that has truly been one of the highlights of my law school experience to date. This year, I was part of the Wilmsonshire Environmental Law Moot, and that experience was a little bit different. Instead of it being a 12-page problem that was drafted by lawyers, uh, it was a real-life issue. Some of you may have heard about it. It's the Red Water case coming out of Alberta um, that was heard by three levels of court. And it's a case that was quite contentious because it has to do with the environmental obligations and liabilities that companies have to face or uphold in the face of insolvency and bankruptcy. On this case, it was heard by three levels of court and five justices found for the company and six found for environmental obligations and having to uphold them in the face of insolvency. This was an interesting uh, experience for me because you had to argue both sides of the case and at the Wilson, I only really got to know one side of the case. And during the time that my partner and I were writing our factum, the Supreme Court of Canada came out with, with their decision. And what this did for me and my partner was put us on the wrong side of the law. And so we had to figure out how we were going to convince the judges in oral competition to side with us. Ultimately, we didn't win this year, but I did get to hear from Justice Cote of the Supreme Court of Canada. And I'm going to share with you a few of her main points from the speech that she made about the power and impact of oral advocacy. Justice Cote said that the most important thing about mooting and about oral advocacy as a lawyer is to participate. You're not going to have victories every day. But the only way that you're really going to lose is by not arguing in the first place. Mooting is both like an art and a science. You can be totally prepared. You can have all the precision in answering your questions and stating your argument. And you can be eloquent in your delivery. But it might not be enough that day. That shouldn't discourage you from presenting your, your case with the confidence, knowing that you've done all the work in advance and you're ready. Overall, oral advocacy 
has the potential to change a judge's mind. Even though they've already read your oral or your written arguments from your side as well as the opposing side and may have some opinion on which side they're going to decide, um, your oral advocacy can change their mind. And that's something you should keep in mind. So why should you try mooting at the U of A? The first thing is, is that it's gonna be the most real uh, opportunity that you're gonna have to try what a real lawyer is going to do in a litigation scenario. You're going to research an area of law in depth, you're gonna find the gaps in the law, and you're gonna have an opportunity to craft new and unique arguments in a way to convince and persuade the judges to side with you. And you're gonna get deeper into the law than you ever thought you could. The second reason is you're going to expand your network of connections, and that network is going to include judges, lawyers, as well as professors. This network is gonna be fundamental to your growth as an oral advocate, and they'll even open doors for you that you hadn't considered before. Lastly, you heard from Dean Payton that our program is growing and it's starting to gain recognition at the provincial, national, and international level. And so we'll we hope that you're going to help us bring home some of those wins and some of those mooting trophies. So in conclusion, mooting is one of the most rewarding and challenging experiences that I've had at the University of Alberta. And it took up a lot of my time, now that I look back at it. But if I was gonna try again, if I was gonna do this experience all again, I would do the exact same thing and get involved. So I encourage you all to first accept your offer to the University of Alberta and then try out for competitive mooting in your upper years. Thank you. Thank you, Kim. I will now be introducing our last two speakers, Katie Hagen and Spencer Oberst. Katie Hagen is finishing her third year of law and previously received a Bachelor of Science at the University of Alberta. She is the president of the Panda Barristers rugby team, a member of the Swift Justice hockey team, and was voted most athletic by the graduating class of 2019. Katie has been an executive member of the Law Students Association all three years of her law degree and serves as the Physical Health and Wellness Chair of the Mental Health and Wellness Committee. Katie will begin her articles this summer in Edmonton at McLennan Ross. Spencer Oberst is a second year law student who previously received his Bachelor of Business Administration at Vancouver Island University. Having been involved in sports within the faculty since coming to Edmonton, he is the current vice president of the men's hockey team, the Tart Feasers, and is the head coach of the women's hockey team. Next year, he will serve as the VP Sports on the Law Students Association and he will be working at Clark Wilson in Vancouver as a 2L summer student. Ladies and gentlemen, Katie and Spencer. So good morning, everyone. Welcome, and again, congratulations. As mentioned, Spencer and I are here today to talk to you about the sporting and extracurricular activities that the uh, Faculty of Law has to offer you. So as Harleen mentioned, I came from the background of science. So coming from an undergraduate program of thousands, I knew when entering the Faculty of Law that getting involved was going to be a priority for me. Um, from the first week of September, sports provided me with the opportunity to connect with students outside of the classroom, um, to be able to participate on student executives, and also, of course, to play a sport. So I will be covering um, the rugby teams, the Panda and Golden Barristers, as well as kind of in intermittent um, sporting events that occur throughout the year. And Spencer will be covering the hockey and intramural teams. So getting right into it, I will start with rugby. Um, when I came to law school, I had zero experience with rugby. I honestly probably didn't even know what a rugby ball looked like. Um, and uh, I can honestly say that now it's been one of the highlights of my law school career. Um, we probably think it's a little bit ironic that law students are choosing to play a contact sport, but um, it's one of the biggest clubs um, for sports within the faculty. Uh, the rugby calendar is relatively short. It's only the first six weeks of law school, um, well, first six weeks of the, sem the semester every year. Um, and those six weeks of practice lead up to both an alumni game as well as the Canadian Western Law Rugby Tournament, which is a tournament that gives um, each rugby team the chance to play teams from other schools within Western Canada. So we play the Faculty of Law from
from University of Calgary, UBC, and TRU. Um, the past three years, the women's team have been champions, so there's a humble brag for us. Um, but honestly, any skill level is um, welcome. We have people who played rugby in college and people like me who had never seen a rugby ball before. So I definitely recommend signing up for that in September. Um, as a 1L for myself, I never thought that I would, and now I'm here talking to you today as the president. Um, so now moving on to uh, kind of in intermittent sporting events that happen throughout the school year. The Law Students Association, which I've been fortunate enough to be a member of for the entire three years of my law school career, as well as other student groups, um, put on various isolated sporting events throughout the year. So in the first semester, we have a golf and a slow pitch tournament. And in the second semester, we have a curling bond spiel, as well as I've been able to co-chair um, a relatively new event, which is the Spin for Mental Health fundraiser. You can participate in none, some, or all of these events. I encourage all. Um, but again, no skill level is required. It's just a great opportunity to be able to connect with um, your fellow students and friends outside of the classroom. Uh, this past year, we were fortunate enough to have about 150 people participate in the golf tournament. And I can fully confirm that not all 150 of them had swung a golf club before. So we highly recommend just taking an opportunity to take advantage of the community outside of the classroom and to interact with your students on a more like personal level and be able to participate in a sport as well. Um, so a lot of the sign up happens in September, so make sure to keep a lookout for that. Unfortunately, I'm a third year, so I won't be here in September, but I will be here today at the Knowledge Cafe. So if you have any questions, um, there's a lot more opportunities for physical health and also mental health that the faculty provides, and I'll be able to answer those questions for you. Um, so I'm now going to let Spencer take the microphone here and talk about a couple other sporting op opportunities the hockey and the intramural teams. Good morning, everyone. Once again, you all worked really hard to get here, and congratulations. Thank you for coming. I'm Spencer, as Katie has already mentioned. I am your incoming VP Sports. I was VP of the Torpezers hockey team last season and the coach of the women's team, the Swift Justice. Quick little blurb about me. I came from Vancouver Island, which is pretty far from here, and I didn't really know anyone. I knew sports is a good vehicle to get away from the books, meet people, like-minded individuals, and get those endorphins going. So I started by playing rugby, and I also joined hockey and a little bit of dodgeball as well. But going into the hockey, we actually offer three teams through the faculty here. We have the Torpfeasers, which is our competitive team. It's generally a social club, but you know we have a lot of fun too. We offer two tournaments we host, actually, which one is the Dale Masson Memorial Western Canada Law Hockey Championships. Saskatchewan, Thompson Rivers, and Calgary come up and we have a competitive weekend and a couple banquets, a lot of fun. We also offer an alumni tournament and we have a vast alumni group that helps with networking and a sense of community within the province. But if the competitive side isn't for you, we also have the litigators, the uh, recreational team within the faculty and they actually won their championship this year. Congrats, Tyler. Um, and players who prefer to play recreationally all the way down to players who've never played before. Last season, we actually had an Australian exchange student who had never played hockey before. We got him some gear, we got him a jersey, and he had a blast. He said it was one of the best experiences he had in Canada. It was awesome. And like, yeah, like I said, no real skill requirement. We'll get you on the ice if you want to play. And that leads me to the third team, which is the uh, Swift Justice, a team I hold true to my heart, a team I had the pleasure of coaching to not one, but two championships this year. We lost them both, but we had a blast doing it. <laughs> and uh, yeah, so the Swift Just is a great team because uh, I don't know if you would think of it this way, but law school is actually a great place to try hockey if you've never played. We'll get you a jersey, we'll get you a bag, we'll get you gear. We have women who have played college all the way down to people who've never played before, like my friend Katie here, who got the pleasure of trying hockey. It's a great place to start, really supportive, fun way to get away from the books. But we don't just have hockey here at the faculty and rugby. We have a lot more as well. And we at the upper LSA will cover all your fees and we'll give you a jersey for any intramural sports. Yeah, jerseys are cool. I guess that's kind of the highlight of my thing here. Um, we offer many different sports like soccer, basketball, volleyball, a very social and competitive dodgeball team. If you're a gym class hero, that's for you. Even water polo, I don't know what that entails, but apparently it's tons of fun. There's no athletic ability acquired, and it's an awesome way to get away from the rigors of law school, meet like-minded people, try something new, and you know, get those endorphins pumping. So I really recommend it. Now, I can't wait to meet you all this fall. Come out and try some sports. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you.
Moral of the story, talk to Spencer if you need a jersey or equipment. <laughs> <laughs> Um, so we're going to conclude for today. Uh, I just want to give some end of, this, um, end of speeches notes here. Um, our campus tours are going to begin at 2 p.m. Uh, please meet at the Pedway outside uh, these doors um, at the Fine Arts Building. And uh, our, the tour guides for the Knowledge Cafes are going to be right outside these doors. Um, please exit through these doors, not these ones, just so we can keep everybody in line. Um, so thank you all for coming, and again, welcome and congratulations.